No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and I decided had to tap back in with my man Danny. I just noticed a fly, so that might be part of the narrative. Wait, wait. Oh, man, the fly narrative. In this pod, yeah. Wait, wait this isn't Sledge Lords? I mean, I don't know. This I, is Sledge Lords, dude. I feel like I'm like interviewing you, but it's hard. No. To, it's hard to tell. If we're podcasting, it's Sledge Lords. Okay. It yeah. doesn't have to be weekly anymore, but it's still Sledge Lords. SL forever. SL, and a lot's gone by. A lot's happened since we did the last SL. A lot has happened. What has it been like? Six months, eight months? I, I can't remember. Your birthday came and went, mm-hmm. along with a big birthday bash. You did this last weekend, and I was there. That's true. Uh, you took advantage of a woman at my party. We're going to talk about that. That <laughs> I had a lot of interactions with a lot of women, and I can't definitively deny that claim, <laughs> but I still think you're an for airing it out here on the I'm podcast. I'm just kidding, because I was actually with her yesterday, and she did mention it, and she mentioned that, I hate to let the audience down, but she mentioned that you did not bust her. Bam! Bam! So I, that's good. I, I still, we can't say definitively that I didn't bust anybody that night, because I came in contact with a lot of women. But if you did, she doesn't know about it. Who is this person? The woman? Yeah. Delilah. I don't even know a Delilah. Delilah uh, is a, an adult star who's kind of known on Twitter. She considers herself to be at the forefront of reply girl technology. You'll And this is like something that has existed throughout YouTube history and, and internet history. But on Twitter, anyone who tweets anything, she will quite often show up in the replies and say something scandalous, exciting, interesting enough that in theory, you will sign up for her OnlyFans because you'll want to see this extremely annoying person who just showed up in the DMs. Uh, you'll want to see them get <laughs> So you went to the party, and apparently she doesn't drink a whole lot, and she had a few beverages. Yeah. And so Danny Mullen ended up actually carrying her home with the assistance of her three friends, which I think is good because you really don't want to be the guy carrying the drunk home. Okay. Uh, but if a bunch of her friends are there and you're just yeah. sort of acting as like, you're, you're like the tone of the situation. Yeah. You're, you're the hired muscle that's able to sort of like get this girl home. Sure. But you weren't actually planning on her passed out corpse, which I think is really cool. And I wasn't planning on it, but I did anyway. <laughs> I, and you're right though. When I go home with the friends, it's like, cause if you go, if you take a chick back solo, like, come on, no, I got to do this. I got to make her, I got to make sure she's safe. Mm. And then you, you prance off like wily e. coyote. Mm. That's alarming. Right. But I was with three other girls who are getting this girl home. And I, I want people to know, because right now I got a brand to protect. Mm. I don't want to sound chivalrous. I, I was definitely going home with those three girls in order to get from the ones who were still awake. Mm. My concern was not with the passed out girl who sounds lovely, by the way. Right. But and also, what are the odds? Maybe she uh, she awakens from her slumber and decides that she wants to take advantage of you. Oh, well, she doesn't sound like she'd be opposed to that sort of were thing. You, were you drunk at my party? I was hammered. I um I stayed up till 6.30 a.m. the night of your party. Did you? Yeah. And, you, and you're trying to convince me that you weren't doing co- I wasn't. That doesn't really bear out to me because I was at that party as well. And by 2 o'clock, I was done. Now, granted, I've been up since like 7 in the morning. I'm not sure exactly what time you're getting up. But by 2 o'clock... And I was smoking a lot of weed, and I did not drink at all. I was fried. People were coming up to me and just, like, saying happy birthday, saying goodnight, and I was just, like, unable to process absolutely anything that was happening to me. It was was a frying experience. Well, listen, buddy. You should have taken some time to step back and smell the roses. Yeah. Because I was there to celebrate one of the biggest business years of your life. And I was happy for you. And that's the only drug I needed to get me through to 6.30 a.m. Happiness. <laughs> happiness for my buddy. Selfless yeah. happiness. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, that was a good time. It's like ancient history, though, now. I feel like the party is so in the rear view because there were so many like different uh, narratives that carried out from it. There was the narrative about uh, Crip Mac not getting invited, which seems like ancient history because Crip Mac is now locked in a federal prison. Uh, or- uh, L.A. County Jail, but awaiting federal prison, I believe. I've heard federal prison is better than L.A. County Jail, by the way. Uh, I believe that there might be a little bit less uh, gang-based brawling. Mm. Like, once you go to the federal prison, you sort of just click up with your race, and you're sort of you're Which, together. That's for confusing the, for Kurt Mack. Not. Like, who's Kurt Mack going to be with? with it, the Samoans. Is there a lot of them? No, he's probably just with the black guys. <laughs> 
for sure. <laughs> Doesn't he say the N-word? He basically is. He, oh, he's black. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, he's black and Samoan. But. Yeah, he's hanging with them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, so that, that was a fun art. I just actually found out about the whole thing about you carrying this girl home, but I forgot to ask her yesterday because she was on Plug Talk yesterday. Mm. Yeah, I. it's weird how that became the narrative. Mm. What happened that night is the three friends and I went to the party of another big L.A. YouTuber not the party, the the house of another big LA YouTuber who we can't name. Right, and I heard it was some sort of like a devilish e type vibe going on. An might have taken place in a pool. Some Lil Nas X. And that's gay stuff, right? Well, but also <laughs> satanic. <laughs> satanic and gay. I, I, we did not bring, uh, well, I was going to say we didn't bring extra into the scene, but we had extra were present. So wait, it was like you, a, you were involved in an Yeah. How many girls did you throughout the course of this? I, so this is what happened. I, I had sex with one, uh -huh. and it might have even been Shut the f up. How, how would you not know? It was definitely What? And then another man joined the affair, <laughs> and at, at one point, I attempted to bring another girl in. Or actually, let me, that sounds. And he was like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> the other guy? He was like, no, 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 it's just me and you. I'm imagining him being like a big Pakistani immigrant. Type, yes. Like, but like fully on testosterone and yes. wearing a Gucci shirt un unbuttoned. Yeah, well, when we post made of the Red Bull, he was the guy who brought it. So we're like, <laughs> out buddy you've officially partied too late if you have to postmate some red bull to the crib we're all out of cook, so we have to postmate some red bull hey, we weren't doing cook, which is why we needed it but i i did try to do something shady i i had the guy who i brought into the picture i told him like hey take the girl we've been hooking up with upstairs have some fun up there i'm gonna see what's going on with her friend uh -huh. and i was in the process of recruiting her friend into the pool uh -huh. But the underlings of this certain celebrity right. in Los Angeles, the underlings blocked. Really? Kind of like his Hurley and his mic. Those guys just sort of were buzzing around like flies, mm. distracting from my... It was going down otherwise. Right. Uh, see, that is an awkward position to be in because I feel like in an environment like that, if you work for someone and that someone is let's say, uh, you know, courting women or, uh, you know, providing an atmosphere for women. Yeah. You certainly, I think, are allowed to dabble with the merchandise. Yes. But you really don't want to be, like, the aggressor mm -hmm. in that kind of situation. Like, basically, I'm saying, if let's say you are P. Diddy's assistant mm -hmm. before he was exposed for having all these freaky things going on or whatever. Yeah. You're his assistant. It's like you never want to be perceived as taking away from the ringleader the ringmaster or whatever it may be uh -huh. now you can get you can get phone numbers and I, I i see the way that various people who work for me kind of play this because there'll be a lot of stars around and obviously like maybe they're shooting content with me and maybe you're the guy who runs the camera and you start to have a little vibe with one of the girls yeah. and you're thinking like maybe i can fuck this girl too in a couple weeks and i see them sort of like Treading lightly, wanting to get her contact information, uh -huh. follow the Instagram, maybe send a DM, but they don't want to necessarily try to be like unseating. They, they don't want me to feel a way about it, but they also know that I'm probably not going to remember who this girl is in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And so therefore they don't, they, they have to tread lightly, but not too lightly. Yeah. It, it's that's like with anything in life. If the guy has the chops to pull it off, it's immediately not offensive. Mm. Like, if your camera guy is smooth and relatively good-looking, you probably wouldn't have a problem with it. But when he starts creeping out a girl who you've worked with multiple times, we've got an issue on our hands. Exactly. Creeping out is the line that you definitely don't want to get to because as soon as you start to be the guy who's the filmer or the the the, the sweeper, the broom guy, or or the the t-shirt the sorter or whatever, oh. you just don't want to be seen as the, the, the one who's making the girls feel weird. At, at, and, at, but then at the same time, you have to realize – Almost every guy, once they start consuming alcohol, becomes a little weird. Yeah. Like, you start to kind of get into the territory of not really acting the right way. Almost always. Almost yes. anybody a couple drinks in is acting a little weird. Mm -hmm. These guys, though, they weren't, they didn't have, because we all know the creepy Uber driver who tells girls, like, oh, you know, this is not my real job. Like, I'm a <laughs> music producer. Like, yeah. th these guys, though, that blocking me didn't even have the creepy camera guy boom mic grip 
energy. They had just like never seen a guy really get seemed like mm. they were so um in their growth as coxmen that they were just watching from around the corner like they were cavemen seeing fire for the first time. Wow. So it was even like more of a cock block if that makes sense. Mm. Cuz uh, there were voyeurs like peeping toms looking at me through the f- shrubs of the backyard. Mm. No, but so was that the uh, the end of the action, or, or how did that? It's, it's almost hard for me to understand how this even worked, and and how you were able to just show up and just be part of the. I started the, my man. Oh, so you show up at a regular party and then you initiate the group. It was like three a.m., but and then the girls that we came with were like the the init- kind of the initiators. Oh, you brought the sluts. That okay. dude. That's the thing about your party. I met them at your party, uh-huh. and your party. Like, it is it is the mecca for a guy like me who's got a job that's kind of repellent. I don't think it could be mecca if it was, like, a party that only existed once and realistically might not even happen in the future. I feel like we need to think of a better metaphor. Yeah, mecca. There weren't too many women there in full burkas. <laughs> I didn't see any men on their knees. Mm. Some women on their knees, perhaps. I did see a girl with a bug up her ass doing, like, a go-go dance right next to me wait seriously yeah wow that's i got awesome. it on my phone because there's this one girl gia durza that i've been trying to shoot with lena with for a while and like she gave me head one time back in the day like on some random sh- nice and i was talking to her at the party and i said hey gia you should come on plug talk sometime she literally like lifts her leg like a dog and pulls her ass cheek up and scoots her underwear to the side revealing a b- in her butt and says okay but can we do anal and I'm just like, uh. and at that moment, I was like, okay, my brain is not completely fried because I'm very much entertaining this proposition. But okay, there's wait, a wait, she was wearing a bug like it was an everyday garment. This chick is an anal legend. She's like so known for anal that I'm pretty sure she has again like at the dentist's office. Like it's just her way of life. Where do you rank her versus Adriana Chechik, another anal legend? To be honest, I haven't done anal with either of them, but from what I understand, they're probably like similar. Like they're both black belts. Oh, maybe it, Adriana Chechik might be approaching coral belt. I don't at least red. Wait, you really go from black to coral? You can go coral. How my many friend? years does coral take? Coral takes nigh a lifetime. I think Gia's probably got a lot of coral in her ass. <laughs> Literal coral. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she went out buggy boarding, and some just broke off and floated up there. But it was kind of awkward. Okay, because I mentioned. Gia is showing me her butt plug a couple different times uh. to Lena. Lena doesn't normally get insecure about the threesomes and the me, you know, the girl stuff. A little bit of insecurity because of the fact that she is just not an anal warrior the way that some of these other girls are. You could call her a blue belt. Lena has a blue belt in in anal. Yeah, I'll give it to her because she's she's we've done it very we've really done it a bunch of times and we've done it on camera. But as she gets older, I feel like it just kind of becomes like more and more of a thing where she just doesn't really like enjoy the the prep, the eating gummy bears for 24 hours in the lead up to it. Is that what you're supposed to do? Some porn girls take it that far. I don't think 24 hours, but I think like you might you might not eat anything but uh, gummy bears from like, you know, 8 p.m. the night before until the scene. What if they just don't eat anything, period? I think not eating anything, period, would probably be fine, too. But I guess the gummy bears kind of fulfill a little bit of that. It seems like that would turn your poop into a sticky, diarrheic sludge. I would love to actually see, <laughs> imagine you're f***ing around the ass and then just a bunch of gummy bears start coming out with it. Just pure gummy bears. By the way, somebody showed me recently the clip of uh, Lena Rhodes getting rubber ducky shoved up her ass. Is that? I didn't know about that. That's a clip. I guess Holly Day showed me this, who I want to talk about that too, buddy. <laughs> okay, we got to talk about that. Because you were talking about Lena getting jealous of you and chicks. You did your first solo was that ever or just in a long time? Second ever. Lena Rhodes, Holly Day showed me, got, I guess, 20 rubber duckies. Shut the f*** up. Small rubber duckies, I'll admit. And I didn't see all of the video, so I can't confirm. I, I wasn't tally marking or moving over the beads on an abacus as each duck disappeared in the rectum. Uh-huh. But Holly Day said 20 duckies, and I saw three come out. Because she shits them all up. Adam is frantically (laughs) Googling this as we speak. Lana Rhodes shows off her very talented asshole. It's on uh, Pornhub with 7.2 million views. Top comment says, poor Mike. (laughs) You know, because Mike. Big Mike, yeah. yeah. uh, But it says that the top, one of the other top comments says, 
Watching her squeeze the rubber ducks out of her ass was so hot. I honestly didn't even know that that existed. I, but th do you feel a little creepy watching that, knowing that she resents her entire porn career and hates the fact that this content is still online? Like, I'm sure that Jules Jordan, who's a legitimate businessman, who's been making porn for all these years, he's probably been hit up by her multiple times asking him to remove this content from Pornhub, and it's probably just a hard no. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you know what you're doing once the second rubber ducky goes up there. <laughs> the first one. Is like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I'm testing the waters here. But, you, I mean, you got to know, like, getting into this career, the porn career, that is a, um, that's an all-in decision. Mm. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's, I do feel bad sometimes because girls get into it when they're 18. Yeah. And I'm glad that I didn't have the ability to do anything life-changing and permanent when I was 18. Mm. Just for the reason that, I mean, nobody was going to pay me to get f***ed on camera. That's probably not true. Probably have somebody would have. Nowadays, I feel like there's got to be some pay pig out there who wants to get mm. get you putting stuff in your ass. And I, I actually think there's a pretty large market for me putting my ass on camera. <laughs> right here. You? I'm one participant, yeah. How big of a check would... Let me ask you this, because we had Holly... You had Holly Day on Plug Talk. Who I like because her name sounds like both Holiday and... Hollandaise sauce. Holly Day. Hollandaise. Is that what you put on an Eggs Benedict? Yes. Okay. I do like Eggs Benedict when I'm hungover. I don't know what it is, but it tastes good. I don't know if I'd like to fuck Holly Day when I'm hungover. <laughs> that sounds overwhelming. But you mentioned to me, you asked me when we were on the Plug Talk couch, mm. what it would take for me to double team a chick with you on camera. And I want to ask you this. If you were the check cutter, the money man, for a Plug Talk scene involving me, you, in some female talent of our choice, what kind of check would you cut me to do my porn debut? See, we don't normally pay the performers. They I just, know. This time you do, though. Okay. They put it on their, their OnlyFans. It's a, a content trade situation. This I, is different. You're asking me how much we would be able to pay you if you were to actually... I, I really don't know. I don't know like how, much, how many people are out there that want to see this kind of thing. I mean... Maybe, like, we could afford to give you a couple thousand bucks, but I don't know. I mean, I, feel, I almost feel like I would rather just pay Swolby. Thank you for two reasons. Thank <laughs> you for two reasons. A, a, a couple thousand? I mean, like, what is it really worth? Like, that that's normal porn rates. Dude, I think if you... I'm not a normal porn star. I know, and I feel like in a lot of ways you might be less valuable no. than a normal porn Dude, star. Dude, I put asses in seats. Dude. I put eyeballs on screen. Mm -hmm. If you and I, here's the problem. There would be a large contingent of my fan base who would probably pirate it. Mm -hmm. That would be the main downside. That occurred to but me. But I think of the people who watch Sledge Lords, I still get hit up by a lot of people about Sludge Lords. Mm. It's it's got I don't know if you've seen that, but I feel like it's got a cultish following. Yeah. I feel like they would pay premium prices, maybe up to a hundred dollars a head to Ooh. watch you and I throat insert name here. Okay, let's let's take you out of the equation. And I let, don't like that so far. Let's Continue. say that I got Brendan Schaub's porn debut. Oh man. How much oh, you think man. like how much is that worth? More me? than mine. How many fans of his who know about him, hate him, love him, etc. How many people are really gonna show up to watch him? I don't really think it's it's that high a percentage. Even if you were to go like to some of the most popular creators, Kyle from Nelk. Oh. How many of his fans really want to see him? I, don't know. I think a lot. Pro I think probably a decent amount. Yeah. I think a lot. I think the hierarchy there is definitely Kyle at the top, Brendan Schaub number two, me <laughs> number three. I'll be humble in that regard. But I'm curious, the industry of OnlyFans. I'm wondering, have you seen any decline in the amount of revenue that women are able to command? Well, for for us, like since, well, I've only been doing plug talk for like two years. But that being said, I believe that the pandemic was the high point for all porn creators. Like things got really out of control when people had that much time to be at home beaten off and tons of new girls were getting into it. I assume that there's some degree of that, but I don't really know that much about how much individual girls have had their paychecks kind of degrade over time. You would think that dudes on average would get a little bit more particular as time went by, but I'm not really sure. I haven't really looked into it. But let's talk about uh, your girlfriend licking my butthole. I Holly was already Day. close to walking out of here as it was. Holly but Day. you bring that shit up again. And that's disrespectful of a tone, dude. How, how many times have you had sex with Holly? 
Should I be honest here? Yeah. Only because I feel like she wouldn't care, but um, a couple of times. Nice. That's dope. You like that? That's a good number. Couple. That's two. Especially since I know you have a refractory period of like multiple days. <laughs> like a koala bear or something <laughs> you're basing this off nothing first of all i have a refractory period of like a couple of weeks because this is how i work I, i'm usually pretty head down focused on my work but then i will be overtaken by like a fever of lust mm. and for a couple of days i just all i can see is the color pink see that's me all the time it's distracting prior to my relationship and everything i used to be on a pussy mission every night of my life and sometimes during the day yeah well also it's it's easy to get pussy out of your system when your job is to fuck it three times a week no, I'm women saying, other than your wife now it's different but i'm just saying like back when i was a, a single man running around these streets it, it was it was it was it took its toll on me yeah mentally no definitely because everything about chasing pussy is at odds with productive things in your life mm. usually what goes hand in hand with chasing pussy drugs and alcohol exactly terrible hours yeah. spending money it's like the antithesis of success it's it's the last thing a man trying to make something of himself should become obsessed with there are some upsides to mm -hmm. it so your girlfriend was on her knees giving me head on that plug talk couch and I start to do. A I will little, throw this in your face right now. I start right to now. do a little motion. It's about to, 80 degrees. I start to lift my leg. And she thinks that I'm trying to get her to sit on top of me and ride my dick. Yeah, what were you actually trying to do? I'm not. I'm trying to get my ass licked. I don't know if you forgot, but I told you beforehand that I was going to go in the bathroom and it actually ended up on your Patreon. Pause. But I, I took the baby wipes and I was jamming the baby wipes halfway up my asshole because I was really trying to make sure that I had a, a nice clean area. For her to tongue down and she did so you, that was very nice of her yeah it, it hurt enough when you actually did it in person but you bringing up bringing it up now is completely uncalled for and over the line i also feel like i might have kissed her more than i've ever kissed a girl that i did a scene with just because i don't know the ass licking plus the fact that i knew you were in the other room trying to get in desperately <laughs> You had to move the Coke machine to block the door. <laughs> no, it was a fridge, but I jiggled the fridge and moved the fridge right in front of the door so that you wouldn't be able to get in. Listen, it, do you want to catch these fists outside? I just this, Do you want to get these bony the paws on your chin? I'm trying to help Holly win. I'm trying to make sure that Holly yeah, but blows her, up further through licking my asshole. It's crazy that that works. I appreciate it. Thank you. Because there's going to be some trickle-down money if she's my new sugar mama. Mm. But you don't have to keep rubbing it in my face like she rubbed her face <laughs> in your asshole on friday it's a dick move bro if you're at the point in your life where you and holly are able to you know you're able to tolerate her porn career and then she's able to tolerate the fact that you will fuck some other girls from time to time and you're able to like have that kind of relationship where she'll just come over and be able to spend time with you satisfy you whatever in that regard i think you should lean into that and i don't think you should let the fact that she was tongue deep in my asshole I don't think you should let that stop you from enjoying her company. It's the lingo, Adam. It's <laughs> tongue deep in my ass. Did you have to paint that vulgar picture for us? You I could think have for said, the audience, yes. You could have just said, don't let the fact that I received analingus distract you. Though even that, it's hard to describe ass looking in any way that's flattering, isn't oh, it? Oh, okay. So, so say I was doing, I'm, I, I consider myself very good at this. I take a lot of pride in this. Let's say that I was in a cafe with a couple other industry people. I don't like where this is going, but we, okay. We were talking about shooting an ass eating scene. Yeah. I would call it a rimming scene. I would say the, the rim scene. That's better. Well, we, we all have all these different words. Yes. So talent instead of, you know, yeah. massive dicked male yeah say like you know all, all these different things that we've created so that we can kind of talk about it in mixed settings sure. without having to seem offensive sure I, and i wish you would have used that lingo when you were speaking to me about holly day but you mm -hmm. chose not i think it was a conscious choice i feel like you're turned on by her porn career i feel like you belong in the cut club with me and destiny and sneeko <laughs> do you want to join that's good company man i wouldn't hate that what is the uh, communication that you've had with your ex-girlfriend what's going on with her her, so Is it her, fully over? So her and I, we we didn't talk basically all of the summer, uh -huh. and that really hurt. Ooh, like feelings. Uh, yeah, like it didn't feel good when there was like absolutely no communication between us at all. I feel that. Um, but then we we started kind of we resumed talking on a on a friendly basis in the fall, uh -huh. and that made me feel a lot better. I I guess just. 
when there's the idea that there's somebody out there who detests you to the point where they won't even speak to you, mm. that, and especially when it's somebody you cared about, that can be sad. How did you get to the point of her detesting you? Um, was it the beating and the... It was the beating. <laughs> uh, it might have been, yeah, the, the me standing up in a restaurant after like six scotches and calling her a whore. Wait, that happened? No. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining a Hollywood blowout. <laughs> right. Some producer and his cheating wife, you fucking whore. But did it, it really got to that point where she despised you? What did you do to earn this? You know, it was like, um, so we, we were... I'm trying to even remember now. It's been so long. But we we broke up. Then we started hanging out again, and the feelings kind of rekindled in the spring. Right. But then w some things happened, very minor things. Like, our relationship was never about big blowouts and screaming and, like, cheating or anything like that. Though you mentioning on a podcast once that a YouTuber, his girl, cheated for 10 grand... Everybody assumed that was me and her. I know, and I was totally talking about somebody else, and I read hella comments saying yeah. that it was about you, and it was about this other dude that you don't yeah. even know. Yes, that was not Mia, and I want to say that for her because she got, like, bombarded with those comments. She was super faithful. That was not her. And but. you had to tell her Adam was talking about somebody completely different. I did, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sure she, like, knew that you weren't telling me that she was prostituting herself. Like, why would you make that up? That would be weird. Well, you know, if I was bitter, if I was really bitter when she wasn't talking to me, I could see somebody doing that True. but i actually just told her i just explained that to her like a couple of weeks ago oh. but we we had some sort of disagreement once we kind of were getting back together and then i think i unfollowed her on instagram Ooh. which pissed her off I and like i it. and i was doing that because the feelings were still there and it just it was hard to see her like in my feed that's why i did it mm. and like i explained that to her over text and she didn't respond to it it can be hard for me to see her in my feed as well because sometimes I'll be scrolling through. Because you feel guilty after you wipe the jizz off your screen. <laughs> no, I'll just be Danny tempted. Danny wouldn't like that. I'll, I'll, like, consider it for a second. I'll be like, maybe I should beat off to this. Maybe I should <laughs> click the bookmark button. No, but I will be scrolling through, and I'll see a picture of her and just be thinking it's some random OnlyFans girl, and then I'll, like, glance at the name and be like, ah, okay, never yeah. mind. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. After all the anal comments. I'm... I mean, that's your actual ex, so I, I can't. Uh. Yeah, but, I mean, Holly, she's... She's playing the game. She's an actress. She's playing the game. Yeah. She's playing. I'm still hopelessly in love with her. And it's every cock she takes is a dagger in the heart. But would you actually be able to date her? Or is, is the whole like fucking dread multiple times thing? Is that is that fucking it up for you currently? You know, her having sex with dread and then me having sex with Holly Day. If anything, that made me feel better about myself mm -hmm. because um, just to even be considered as a sexual object after that fucking full gl full grown anaconda slithered into her pussy mm. made me feel less self conscious about my penis but um i don't know i, I i'm not really in the place where i want to date anybody right now and me. and i don't know and i don't think i i would not do the i would not be able to date a porn star yeah yeah it's I not for the fan at heart i feel like a lot of guys probably don't have the fortitude yeah people talk because when people tell me like adam 22 is a cook danny why are you hanging out with him <laughs> i'm just like clearly adam has the kind of mental wiring where he's able to do that and still be perfectly happy and clearly he's a fucking super high level guy so who are you to judge him from wherever you are in your own life which i guarantee you aren't living your terms in the way that he, you aren't living your life on your terms in the way that he is it seems so strange to me for someone to actually be like angry about the whole cuck thing because i totally yeah. understand the the teasing the making jokes the oh this is funny we're going to exploit this for the lols but i don't really understand the people who are like mad about it in the same way that if i found out that donnie over here was secretly sniffing around with some dudes <laughs> Would, would I hate him? I wouldn't be mad at him. I would. Yeah. Would I think it was pretty funny that, like, oh, okay, uh, he's a little zesty. He takes a walk on the wild side from time to time. Of course I would think it was funny, but I'm not going to be, you know, that's your choice, what you want to do behind closed doors. And, and for the record, Donnie, as far as I'm concerned, has a spotless record of heterosexuality. But I think there's a couple of poop stains on that record. I'm looking, we don't know. We don't kidding, know. We're Donnie. still looking into it. I will say, though, Donnie right now, his posture at the computer chair, he's got the posture. Oh, of like, he points at his ring. His ring. Well, it's California. <laughs> 
California, <laughs> gay marriage is legal, buddy. I have met your wife, but it could be a dude. We it, don't know. He, Donnie, you do have the posture of a guy looking up gay porn Ooh. right now. And that's just your posture. I'm not. That's, and it's from behind, too. All I see is his head sticking up over the computer chair. But Imagine we looked over there one day, and the guy who's, like, running the podcast also was, like, multitasking, watching gay porn. Well, it, in our case, he'd probably just be Googling something we told him to Google. Mm. Hey, hey, Google Performer X's cock. I want to see how I stack up. Do you think that the fans watching at home are annoyed by the fact that we've been talking about sex for a half hour? Or do you think that they're, they're all right? I am optimistic, and I think that people like it when we podcast enough that they're probably they're down. Yeah, I think they're probably down. People okay. have missed sludge lords. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, other other things that I wanted to discuss aside from Holly Day licking my asshole like a like a tootsie pop. <laughs> you want to fucking? Go. You want to go? Yeah, Leonard wasn't around for that one. That was a little it was a little spicy. Um, yeah, how did that uh, how that feel to go home? Did you feel a little guilty? I didn't even mention anything about it to her. Mm. I didn't say a word to her about it. Mm. And then finally, like two days later, she goes, so how was Holly? You didn't say anything about it. You didn't say a word. You didn't tell me one thing about it. I guess that was a little suspicious. Yeah. I should have told her like some sort of like super basic version of it to make her like less curious. But yeah, yeah. I think me not telling her anything about fucking yeah. her made her suspicious that maybe i enjoyed it so much that i didn't want to tell her a single thing about yeah it. and then i actually like had the perfect trump card because she said something about like me hitting holly up to shoot so i go to my text and i go to my text with holly and i show her that our most recent communication was holly saying like hey i would love to come on plug talk sometime if you guys have any openings so that was like super good that I was like, no, look, sure. she hit me up to do it. If what if the last thing in my phone, and it's well within the the rights of my relationship to uh -huh. hit up girls to be on plug talk, but as we were sort of having the conversation about like, you know, who was the aggressor, that was like a real good thing for me to be able to pull out on Lena and say, like, look, uh -huh. I didn't initiate this. Yeah. Holly initiated that. Boom. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to cut the scene where you cream pied her and told her you loved her, but Oh my god. Cream pied her would have been so insane. You know, you and I are Eskimo brothers now, official. Official. Just with her. Or with who else? You got some other ones? Probably. Maybe. Who we knows? Should, we should consult Liz. You and I get around LA, baby. If we looked at every person that we have in common on Instagram, we would probably find like a lot of guys and like maybe some girls. Mostly guys. Yeah. I wonder, you said Holly said jokingly when we were doing the plug talk interview that we were her dream double team. Mm. I think there are a fair amount of women who wouldn't mind the the twenty two Danny Mullen double team. If you wanted to do that on plug talk, I would be happy to do it. I feel like I could get hard and perform with a lot of crazy shit going on. I yeah. feel like if I was in a refugee camp that I could get hard <laughs> and perform. If somebody busted out a camera, you on the other hand, I'm not hundred percent sure. I've seen I've seen guys who fuck for a living, unable to perform because they're in the same room as another guy. And that, I, I would hate to see that happen to you. Uh, if you and I had a, a show where we basically did Sledge Lords, like we had the headsets on, the headset mics, and we had a drink in our hand, which I'm not sure if that's legal in pornography, but if we were drinking and podcasting while we were double teaming a chick, that might break the industry. One time a girl showed up to Plug Talk with a Truly. That's not that strange. But she had it like on the set like while we're doing the interview she's like sipping the truly is that not allowed i well, feel like that might be illegal it's just kind of weird because it's like you know she was totally coherent but also it's her drinking alcohol yeah so you just like you you, you probably want to have like a cup or something because sure if the girl's gonna look drunk at all like it's totally normal to have a couple drinks before you have sex but if you're gonna look drunk on camera yeah. i feel like that is all bad that's like you definitely don't want to like even get close to that line yeah, that's like bondage. Well, it's crossing the lines of legality, maybe. But bondage isn't crossing the line of legality, is it? Bondage can be. I think it's illegal. I think if a girl is truly tied up, you're not allowed to have sex with her when she's tied up. You have to untie her. Well, I think like in the bondage community, I'm not sure about the legality of it, but in the bondage community, for sure, they have like an agreement about exactly like the terms of the consent and stuff. Because yeah, if you're fully tied up and then you decide that you don't want to do this and you can't stop them from doing it yeah. god that could get tricky real quick i wanted to ask you about the uh the felony situation sure break this down for our slightly less uh regime adjacent uh viewers who not don't guilty know, baby who don't know about what you did not guilty so you went somewhere to tennessee tennessee can i take a wee wee before we talk about this do it tennessee tennessee 
So yeah, it's it's been we haven't recorded a sludge lord since I got arrested in Tennessee. Right. I we were filming a documentary out there basically on like big food and big soda exploiting poor people. Mm. In the way that like Coca-Cola and Hostess cupcakes are marketed exclusively to people in poverty. Mountain Dew has basically been crop dusted into Appalachia <laughs> since like the 1930s. Right. So we were doing something on that. And the way we were going to cover that in a funny, unique, Danny Mullen-esque way is we went to a free pop-up dental clinic for basically impoverished hillbillies who can't afford a dentist. Uh-huh. And we went in there and were, like, pretending we were dental hygienists. Right. Amateur dental hygienists. We pretended we were dental hygienist enthusiasts. Right. And we get there, and, like, the really, the, the bit was super innocent. Like, it, it, what we were being very polite to everybody. Everybody was laughing. They invited us in. Nothing really even usable happened that I would be like, yes, I'm psyched on this footage. This is going to be great on video. But a couple of the people at the clinic were very displeased we were there, and they called the police. Mm. Now, we just flew across the country, drove deep into the wilderness of eastern Tennessee. This is the very first shoot, the very first morning of what's going to be a four-day shoot. And the cops roll up. And on why us. did you end up at this particular dentist's office in this remote area? Because we wanted somewhere deep in Appalachia, and this was the only one we could find. And I just love the fact that you're used to doing content in LA. And as far as YouTube content goes, as far as getting the police to do anything, the standard in LA is about as high as it gets. You've got to really fuck up in order for the cops to take notice because they are just demotivated, understaffed, uh, and just really, unless it's a murder, Mm -hmm. unless you have a brick of cocaine strapped to your waist or a bomb or something, then they pretty much are not going to show up or do anything. And then you go and you do this like relatively harmless skit that I feel like if you went to every dentist's office in Hollywood and tried to do this this, uh, act, you probably wouldn't ever even run into the cops i would just do the starbucks across the street one of the baristas made a beautiful four latte frappuccino tray that was clearly destined destined for some film shoot or some tech powwow um a homeless guy in cargo shorts and non-matching shoes walked in lifted it up and walked out the door just stole probably 35 dollars worth of starbucks so you the barista took one look (laughs) Didn't even say a word and began remaking the order. Shut the fuck up. Really? No thought of calling the police for the reasons that you just laid out. Wow. In L.A., if you called the police, they would basically laugh in your face. If you were like, hey, you know, they just, a guy just came in here and stole a bunch of merchandise. And I feel like in most Starbucks throughout the world, if there were to be this like high-priced drink that came up missing, that the, the Starbucks staff, when they saw this discrepancy in what was sold that day that they would assume that it was just one of the employees who had helped themselves to a drink because how else would someone get it? I don't feel like any of the Starbucks I go to on a normal basis that you would ever see someone stealing from that sort of end zone there where they let everybody get their drink. But welcome to Hollywood. Yeah. Happens on a regular basis, I'm assuming. Constantly. So, So you're so right. And I go to jail because they look through. The cops were actually like very polite the cop was all in favor he knew that what we were doing so they charged me with a felony Uh and the reason they charged me with a felony is they were throwing the book at me they were prosecuting me as if i had set up a a real dental clinic represented myself as a dentist and was performing bogus root canals for profit Uh that's how they prosecuted me like I was actually harming people and making money from it, not an asshole YouTuber from L.A. Wow. But, of course, being an asshole YouTuber from L.A. probably even made it worse. The cop was in favor of dropping it. He wanted to drop it to a misdemeanor in court. Uh-huh. It was just, I, I think it might have been one of the DAs who just hated me. But they took me to jail over it. The cop just kind of shrugged his shoulders. I was like, I'm sorry. It says it's a felony. We got it. They took me to jail. And that jail... That was my first time ever being in anything other than, like, a drunk tank. Mm. And, Adam, for for once, it kind of, like, made me sympathize with all these people out here blowing the trumpet of criminal reform. Mm. And, you know, because I've always been pretty pro-law and order. Like, I I couldn't relate to the George Floyd riots and the people who were like, fuck the police, ACAB. I didn't get that at all. White. 
What's that? You're white. Yeah, basically I'm white. <laughs> that would have saved me a lot of breath right there. Right. But once I was in that jail cell for about a day and just seeing those terrible conditions, like I kind of like have sympathy now for the people who are just they're born into poor circumstances and ignorance leads them down a road that it winds them up in jail. I'm pretty sure that the Appalachia the Appalachia region is where have you ever seen I think it's the most viewed video on the Soft White Underbelly YouTube channel and it's basically like a house full of like inbred handicapped people the Whitakers yes the Whitakers yes. And, and they're they're like barking like dogs yes. and there's a lot of like <laughs> yes. like just weird high pitched noises and shit and like you've never really seen people like this i'm pretty sure that they are the result of like intense multi-generational inbreeding yes which is fine which is great honestly yes. um and that was the, I, I imagine there were probably some people who fit that sort of description behind bars with you or was it not that intense that's the good news. I've seen that Whitaker's video, yeah. and though the people are deeply, deeply inbred, they're all very friendly uh. and jovial toward the host. That was the case in jail, too. I walked in there. First of all, one of the guys recognizes me from YouTube, and is a huge fan, so I'm basically in with my pod of 30 guys right off the bat, which I really needed because I was scared when I saw they were going to release me into general pop. Mm. But... It's probably better that I got arrested in eastern Tennessee and got thrown into jail versus L.A. Because there, it was all jolly meth heads yeah. who, per who basically weren't guilty of violent crimes. And they just wanted to get released so they could go score another bag of crystal. Right. And, um, yeah, they kind of reminded me of the Whitakers. I can't confirm or deny that any of them were inbred. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah, same sort of vibe. It's interesting because I don't feel like just being a meth head is the type of thing that's going to really get you behind bars out here. The meth heads are allowed to run wild. You have to commit some pretty nasty crimes yeah. while you're being a meth head. Dude, that's what I was thinking about is we keep California. We obviously have this massive homelessness crisis. I forget. We have like 60 percent of the nation's homelessness. Well, no shit. Like the incentives to be homeless in California all year round, you can sleep on the beach without a blanket and pretty much be fine. Mm. You can walk up to a police cruiser take a deep hit of a meth pipe in his face and blow the cloud into the open car window, mm. and he'll probably just write you a ticket. How harshly do you judge somebody for smoking meth? Because there was a guest that I had on the podcast recently, and I have no idea if it's true, but there was a lot of comments accusing him of smoking meth, and I don't really know how to feel about that because on one hand, Let's say that I knew that you were, you know, doing coke on a regular basis. I mean, I would be a little bit worried for you on a friendship level, but it's not like I would, like, write you out of my life just because you're doing coke. And I wonder, like, is meth that serious? It's definitely a step further than coke. Like, culturally, I feel like it occupies a certain place in our mind. Yeah. But it's, I, I wouldn't judge, judge somebody harshly if I found out that Donnie over here, if I found out he was on Adderall on a daily basis, I would be like, whatever. Like, that's, Donnie, that's cool. However you get through the day. Stop popping Addy and looking up gay porn, Donnie. You really <laughs> need to chill over there. I, it's whether, I mean, I don't know anybody who successfully smokes a lot of meth. Mm. That's what, I mean, we know, a, we know some guys who do coke probably too much right. who are still killing it. But I think because there isn't that champion of entrepreneurial meth smoking, mm. we can't really approve of it. The only guy I know who's on methamphetamine or who has done it in the past, though I'm not sure he's clean, is Rat Dick Ralph, right. who has now entered both of our worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost banged my wife. <laughs> well, he was there on the reality show. Sure, sure. Almost what? got his ass beat by Crip Mac. If, yeah, exactly, on my channel. If he would have won, probably oh. multiple times. Yeah, yeah. On, on our channel, he almost got his ass beat. If he would have won, like... I don't know how it would have happened, but would you have let him? Spoiler, he would not have won. I mean, a lot of people keep asking me, like, what if Crip Mac won? I, I hate to be the one who's kind of, like, letting you guys know that Santa Claus isn't real. Yeah. But, you know, Crip Mac and Rad Dig Ralph were really brought in for comedic relief. Because most of the, like, actual porn star dudes, they're cool. They're smooth. They're nice to hang out with. They're, like, fun guys. But they're not, like, hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lil D was kind of funny, and he ended up winning. But, like, Crip Mac and Red to Grout are, like, way more extreme. We need to re For season two, it shouldn't be Lena. It should be a chick like Kazumi, mm -hmm. who we know will bang guys for the lols. Yeah. When we saw that with King Croc. And then it really should be just the most reprehensible bunch of guys we can put together. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to do, like, Kazumi Squid Games. 
and not just because she's Asian. <laughs> but like, can you imagine if we had like, I mean, real Squid Games was like four hundred guys, right? And yeah. Like, I, I, we can't do four hundred. But imagine we like had like a like a hundred or like a couple hundred, and we like really did some crazy ass events. Yeah. And then we whittle it down to like the final ten that get to gangbanger. Dude, I love it. I love it. And then you and I are drinking, like walking around. I say maybe yeah, ten guys get to do it at once. Yeah. So it's like a group scene, and you and I are up in the mix. If I'm gonna do this, I need to like hurry up and do it because Kazumi literally will start producing this herself if she sees this episode. Kazumi, she has created every kind of porn content imaginable. I feel like at this point it must almost be kind of awkward for her because she's like running out of podcasts to go on and like probably doesn't really have any like stories that are gonna wow anybody anymore. The way that when she told us about her her gangbangs back in the day, yeah, we were just so captivated like i'm sure she just doesn't really have like infinite stories like that anymore well i mean we just came up with a great idea that'll make her probably at least six figures in like five seconds so i'm just scared of how much it would take to produce kazumi squid games whatever i mean we fucking just bring the scale down a little bit like i mean kazumi dude i all respect goes to kazumi when i saw her not only did she do a scene with a civilian who who I love. I love King Croc, but he was $10,000 in debt and struggling with mental health issues. Not only did she do a scene with him, a non-porn star, unprotected, she did it in his bathroomless, like, 20-square-foot bedroom right. with cobwebs and dirty laundry on the floor. I feel like she's not trying to be that girl anymore, and I don't know if that's because, like, maybe her boyfriend isn't really feeling her. Shout out to Reggie. Shout out to he Reggie. Is, he is the man. I don't know if maybe that that's just, like, something that occurred to me is, like, maybe he's not really feeling the vibe of her, like, really perpetuating this I'm for everyone thing. Or maybe it's just her trying to clean up her image a little bit, but I did, I, I texted her months ago perhaps like during the rollout of the crib mac episode and i asked her or it, was, it might even been before that but like i asked her will you bang crib mac for plug talk mm-hmm. and I, I i was really thinking that she was going to do it and she was like no i'm not that girl anymore hmm. like i'm just not i'm not trying to be that the gangbang girl i'm not trying to be the girl who fucks crib mac or the girl who fucks king croc like, yeah like i do you think crib mac or do you think that kazumi would enjoy fucking crib mac or king croc more <sighs> They are different sides of the same coin. <laughs> Could be the same in a lot of ways, yeah. I get it. Yeah, it's like, that is, I mean, it's not the same as being the chick who gets shit on in, like, a Japanese porno or, like, the Bukaki girl. Mm. But it is, like, there is an element of I am, like, the gimmick in the porn industry. Like, it's like doing the donkey show in Tijuana. Yeah, I'm going to let this fat fucking guy get behind me and just sort of, like, hammer away at me a little bit until yeah. he, like, busts a little nut, and I'm just along for the ride. Yeah, I wonder if Kazumi thought that was worth it in the long run. Yeah, I'm trying to picture in my head right now, from Reggie's perspective, her boyfriend's. Like, I'm trying to imagine if I was still with my ex. Do I want her banging dread? Who's like the professional quote unquote option, or but do we'll I want turn her... her vagina into a cavern so yes. for some period of time? Yes, and then there's for me there's the the, the terrifying idea that she really really likes it, mm. and that um, versus King Croc, where you know there's no chance that she'll like it. Well, he did have a big penis, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, couldn't it's, keep it hard. It's King Croc doesn't have the swagger. Yeah, he could not. Good, he couldn't get it hard for the life of him. For all his talk about um, his sexual uh, dynamism. But but the, would I rather have my ex bang Dread or Rat Dick Ralph? Hmm, that's tough. I I might rather put a gun barrel in my mouth to be honest. I'll be honest with you, not knowing anything about King Croc, uh, or really not knowing much about Crip Max living situation in general. When I saw your video where you went to Rat Dick Ralph's house yeah. and you showed how nasty his apartment was, yeah. that really struck me as like, oh, you're disgusting. You're like the <laughs> grossest fucking person on earth. Crip Mac at one point, you probably don't know this. Crip Mac at one point, like his ex kind of like exposed like the room that he was living in at the time. And like the gist of it is kind of like that there was like a mattress and then like a trash bag full of clothes in the bath in the closet. And like uh-huh. that's like he's just not really somebody who like felt the need to like settle down any more than that. Yes. Like he's got a bag of clothes. Yes. Probably got, I, if I had to guess, he would probably have like another corner where he has his dirty clothes yeah, before yeah. he gets the laundry done. Although I don't know if he ever really like wore the same shirt twice. If huh. he did, I didn't see it too often. That's a luxury of clout. 
Yeah. People are just giving you so much free shit. I feel like Crip Mac was the kind of guy who would just like wake up and buy a new shirt every day. That's um, irresponsible. Yeah. But I, I, you know what? I can relate to that because I feel like every guy, when they're around community college age, mm. has some version of a mattress on the floor and a bag of laundry in the corner. And I, to me, adulthood is really the journey from that to having a bed frame and a laundry hamper and you know, the baseboards of your house being clean. Right. Like, Lena always says that when she met me, she, like, through our, us going on our first date and stuff, she's thinking, this is very, like, early era podcasting, but she's like, he's got this popular podcast. He's 31. He seems like, you know, he's got his life together to some extent. He might have some money or something. And, you know, she's she was only, like, 25 when I met her, so she's not really, like super familiar with the good life or anything like that sure. she's like fresh out of college she's not really like expecting me to be like mega rich to hang out with her or anything like that but then she goes over my house and it's a mattress on the floor it's like you know like i, I live with like five bmx dudes at the time and she was very much like ah like okay he lives in a fucking shithole and she was kind of let down at that moment yeah but, you know to me i never really saw the reason to have a bed frame because in my mind it's like well i'm gonna move my apartment every year or two and i don't even know how to put a bed frame together so if it does get put together yeah there's no way that i'm gonna be able to reassemble it sure so what the fuck is the point and i like what does a bed frame even do don't you feel like the bed on the ground is like 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 you have the box spring and then you have the, the mattress What what is the bed doing I I think it adds um, aesthetically something aesthetically and, for sure. But and, like, and then also the bottom of my box spring when it was just on the ground would be, would get like dirty, very like disgusting. dust That's mites true, and yeah, shit. Yeah. And so it keeps everything clean. But I'm, did you have some net worth built up when you first met Lena when you were thirty one? If I had to get well, I had the BMX website that was like doing okay, I'm grinding out these vlogs and stuff. I'm maybe I, if I had to guess, I would say I probably had like thirty thousand dollars in the bank. All right. So, and I have a few people on payroll and stuff, so it's like I'm kind of doing my thing. But sure, no, sure. I wasn't doing like great or anything. Maybe, yeah, maybe twenty thousand. Yeah, I, I feel like once a guy gets like twenty or thirty grand, that's just so head and shoulders above the average guy out there that he's well on his way to being successful. The thing is, is that the average dude that I know will get twenty or thirty grand and start spending as if this money is going to last forever. Sure. When in reality, having twenty or thirty grand is like. It's a good safety net. Yes. It's a good, like, maybe you could take on some sort of, like, small business uh, businesses from here or whatever. Certainly not enough for you to start living as if money doesn't matter that much. Sure. Yeah, it should get the taste of saving and having money in your mouth mm. and encourage you to acquire more. But I'm curious now because you're obviously further along in your business journey than I am, but... I, you know, I've made adjustments to my living situation. My apartment is very nice. I have a bed frame. I have two bathrooms, two bedrooms, an office. Like, my, my place is fine, but I still have a piece of shit car. My closets are still dirty. Um, I don't have an, an adult cookware set. I don't have matching glasses and plates. Is there still anywhere in your life where you feel like that 31-year-old guy sleeping on a mattress on the floor? Well... If you get into my car, because I smoke spliffs, yeah, and I quite often smoke smoke them while driving, and my car doesn't have like a an ashtray, okay, so I just kind of ash like wherever, like there's like a little nook like next to the the steerer thing, like where you change uh -huh. the gears or whatever uh, I don't know what it's called, but uh, uh, yeah, the gear shifter in your BMW, sure, the, yeah, your the gear shifter, your ninety thousand dollar car, it's like a little nook right there, and I just kind of ash in that. And then sometimes I'll, like, look down and see all that ash building up, and I'll just go. <laughs> and I'll just blow on it as hard as I can, and that sends the ash flying all over the car. So there will, like, no longer be very much of it in uh -huh. this little nook. Yeah. But now there's a small amount of it. Uh -huh. on every other part of the car yeah yeah and sometimes my girl gets in there and it smells like an ashtray it smells like very very gross mm -hmm. that's definitely something that i look at and i'm like you're a nasty fuck mm -hmm. yeah i wonder if you'd be doing that if you owned the car instead of leasing it let me hit you with something even worse that i don't think i've ever uh said on here but uh, that's Let's the thing it. is every once in a while i get my car cleaned it's good as new i mean it still kind of smells a little bit like tobacco and shit in there but like for the most part it's like Kind of takes you back to reality. 
I think at some point you might not be able to shift back into park from drive because of all the grime buildup. But that would be a problem. When I was in college, I had my computer up against the wall, and uh, you know, one one day I'm just beating my meat, and I'm in college, so I'm not like mature, responsible enough to even have some tissues. Sure. And I just kind of like notice there's a little bit of room be- between my desk and the wall. Mm. So as I'm jerking off and I'm realizing that I don't have anywhere to get rid of it, and like mm. the normal hand method, which I like. Is, beat off onto like your hand you sort of land it right here that's impressive and then you run off to the bathroom and you you know get rid of it so wipe it down get rid of it that's whatever. impressive wash your hands um that didn't seem like an option to me because i'm in the dorm so it's like you know if i want to i have to walk like 50 feet to get to the college bathroom in, yeah in my uh the communal dorm yeah. room bathroom and i don't want to be like walking through the hall like balancing a little like, nut on like, my hand like, like you got a parrot on your wrist yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so I beat off into that corner between the desk and the wow. wall. And I look at it. I'm so young. I'm like 19, so I, I have no brain. I look at it and I think, oh, it it, it like it, it it dried clear. So you can't see it at all. So I do it a couple more times, thinking it's just gonna continue to like dry clear. Then finally I go and I pull the desk away from the wall. After doing this, I don't know, 10 times, and I realized that the cum, yeah, it might have dried clear on the top part, but as it continued to streak down the wall, it hardened closer to the ground. So the yellowness that you would typically see in your cum has like a shade of yellowness to it. Like that was really collecting more at the bottom. So like I had to go and buy a Brillo pad and some water and you know kind of like scrubbed mm. it off the wall and stuff but like just over the years like i've just thought about that quite a few times and that just stands out to me mm. as like probably one of the grossest things that i've ever had going mm-hmm. yeah i'm noticing <laughs> these two spaces that you've treated so poorly both were rentals your dorm room and your car your current car yeah so i hope you're treating your your house that you own with your lovely wife a little bit better yeah well, i share it with my my wife and now my kids so it's like i, I don't really have the option of doing anything yeah. Gross, yeah i'm trying to think of the worst place that i have jizzed i the, <laughs> well, the one thing i will remember as far as like disposing of like sexual matter and then just leaving it be isn't any bodily fluids but i remember i used to draw very graphic pornographic images when i was a kid I would draw, like, because I had all these sexual urges, but I didn't even know what sex was, uh-huh. and I didn't know what masturbation was. Nobody had taught me. So I just, my way of finding an outlet was I would draw women laying on top of men. <laughs> at what age? It's hard to know how old you were at those ages. This was probably, I started jerking off in, like, fifth grade, so this must have been in fourth grade or third grade. Uh. And I would just draw people on top of each other, and... Those ended up somewhere. You know, I didn't throw those away. I didn't burn those. Those are, were just folded underneath a book that my mom, a couple of years later, probably lifted up. Uh-huh. And, and I guess that's probably not as gross as jizz. Like, I mean, you're going to—I mean, if you had a son, his sexualness is going to come out at some point, And you probably just take that as normal. If you had a 16-year-old son and you walked in on him beating off, what, what would you do? <laughs> Because you don't like stop them, right? Yeah, no, you're right. Like you're <laughs> when I was a kid, and probably when you were a kid, that would be the worst thing you could ever imagine happening is yes, your mom or dad. But, but like, I think when I was 16, like when I'm like sitting on the couch beating off as a kid, like if my, I think I thought my parents were gonna like I was gonna be in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> which doesn't really make sense to me. <laughs> what would they do? Like, who the fuck cares? Like, this is like the most natural thing on earth. Like, good, jerk off. Like, this is way better than you fucking a bunch of girls when you're 16. Yeah. What if your dad, to punish you, made you make eye contact with him and finish? That would be That's one what option. I'm gonna do. What about, it's like getting caught smoking a cigarette where they make you smoke the whole pack. You got to jerk off like 20 times in a yeah. row. Jerk off to <laughs> the, every page of the porno magazine you have on the coffee table <laughs> while your making eye contact. dad's going to sit there on a stool and just be like, all right, you like jerking off? <laughs> do it 20 times. <laughs> You're right, though, dude. Like I would, if I caught my sixteen-year-old son jerking off, I wouldn't mind at all. Like I mean, like what the fuck do you think a sixteen-year-old boy is gonna yeah, do? Yeah, he's not I'll jerking be proud off. Of him. I say, hey, oh, my, my bad, bro. I'll, yeah. be, I'll be back in ten. Yeah. How long do you need? How long you beat off for? You need twenty. I'll be back in twenty-five. Give you a little extra time. Yeah, absolutely. All the time he needs. Yeah. However, I would then check the cookies on the computer afterwards, and oh, if I yeah. saw any gay shit, I would disown him. Yeah. 
I'd be worried about my uh, my son watching porn just because it's you, a joke, by the way, as well as a few other people, have told me that through watching too much porn, they like weren't able to perform with a woman, which I've never really had that problem, but I could imagine it. You told me, Adam told me this, the night before he had sex with Holly, my fucking girlfriend, that you beat <laughs> off the night before. Yeah. And it's, for me, if I have a date coming up where I think there's a pretty good chance I'm going to get laid, I won't jerk off for like two days before. So I have a hair trigger. Yeah. I don't, I, I got to clean it out. If any, uh, Through porn, and I hate, I hate, for the fans who are anti-sex, I'm sorry, but through porn I've realized there's two different kinds of guys. There's the guys who have a hard time finishing, and then there's the guys who have a hard time not finishing too quickly. Huh. Now, if you are in the middle where you just have, like, amazing control over your erection and you can kind of just come whenever you want to or whatever, that's amazing. But most guys fall into one category or the other where it's kind of hard to get hard or it's just kind of hard to stay hard. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I'm a guy who I will finish too quickly if left to my own devices. So I have to try to lessen the pressure mm -hmm. and i've gone in there to do porn with like two days worth of cum built inside my body i don't uh, it's it's too much of a hair trigger hmm. yeah it seems like the porn industry used to be the big taboo was not being able to get hard hmm. i never have any problems with that but increasingly i am hearing from guys who their dick doesn't work because of porn hmm. and they can't and finishing the only way they can finish is jerking themselves off the supple skin of a woman's innards no longer does the trick. Forget a blowjob. That's completely out the window. That's baffling to me. Can you come from a blowjob? Yeah. Easy. It's a little... The pussy is way easier to come from. I agree. But just in general, like I feel like the, the inside of a vagina feels outrageously good. I spent my whole life chasing that feeling. <clears throat> yeah, I had my first unprotected sex in a while i basically always wear condoms i had over christmas break i had unprotected sex with a girl and it felt stupefyingly good <laughs> and I, I felt it reminded me what it's like to have that hair trigger yeah because i she had to keep telling me to stop because i was like come oh, on I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it i'm gonna finish and i ended up it was on a picnic table next to the river what the fuck where were you uh, dude that's what, when you're staying with your parents you got to get creative about where you Right. Where you do. That's why people always complain. They're like, oh, I live with my parents. What can I do? Like, I can't get any chicks. Sneak around. D find a picnic table by the river, dude. Right. And hopefully not the one that I already came on. I have this memory of, like, right before I got serious with lineup, I went back to visit my parents in uh, New Hampshire, and I had met this girl, maybe on Tinder, maybe on Instagram. I'm not really sure. She tells me to come pull up to her house. I go to her house. She comes out. She sits in the car, talks to me for a little while. She invites me into the house. I go into the house. This girl's half black. And I wasn't going to ask which parent was black. Sure. But I'm kind of thinking in my head, what if she's got some big linebacker looking motherfucker of a dad yeah. who's going to, and, and not saying that he's got to be a pussy if he's white or anything, but I'm just kind of like painting the picture sure. in my head about how awkward this could potentially get. And keep in mind, I'm like 30 at this point. And this girl's like in her mid-20s. I don't know why she still lived at home with her parents. Uh -huh. You know, respect. You live in the fucking middle of nowhere in New Hampshire. You live yeah. with your parents. It is what it is. It happens. I cycled into the parents' house a couple times when I was in my mid-20s. And so she like sneaks me into her room and we're kind of like just hanging out and stuff. And, uh, you know. Was it clear she was sneaking you past somebody? It was clear that her parents were sleeping in the same house mm -hmm. and that it was like midnight. And I'm just kind of feeling guilty because I can almost like empathize with the parents a little bit more than myself at this point in my life. Because I'm thinking, you know, like, what if this fucking dad walks in here and sees me sitting on the fucking bed hanging out with his daughter? And yeah. like, I, I don't know if he's going to try to fight me. At the very least, this seems just like an overreach on my behalf because I'm a grown fucking man why didn't I just get a hotel room I don't know it might be like 20 or 30 miles to the nearest hotel room but either way she at some point I think her dad came down and like she she avoided him seeing me she left went out in the hallway and had a conversation with him that I'm assuming involved her admitting that she had a boy in her room but he didn't come in to actually see me and then she took me out to her car and suck my dick in well actually my car my mom's car she gave me head in the car oh i was 30 years old okay so it uh, you have narrowly avoided a catastrophe imagine this guy just beating the shit out of me
Did you find out if he was white or black? I never found out. Oh, the mystery. I think Tom Segura, who had a good joke about this. If you, um, if there's a half Asian chick or a half Asian guy, and there's one white and one Asian parent, it's never the guy who's Asian. Yeah, <laughs> it's the case. Asian guys get the short end of the stick, literally and figuratively, in our society. Like they just like kind of just are constantly demasculated, and you gotta you feel bad for them. Like they need to be able to fight. Yes. To get that back, right? That's why we need the return of Asian gangs. I don't think there's enough. We They need to come down from, like, Northern California. There's, like, a lot of Hmong gangs. But I will say, I think Asian guys are kind of coming. I think they're kind of blowing up. Mm. I've heard a lot of girls recently tell me they think Japanese guys are really hot. I train jujitsu, and most of the guys at my gym are, like, athletic, strong, rich Asian dudes mm. who have, like, tech jobs. I think if a chick just... I mean, forget, like, fucking fishing at a Beverly Hills bar for a sugar daddy. Just find an Asian guy on the street and suck his dick. If you He's live, probably got a lot of money. That's a fact. If you live in a society that prizes, I don't know, being tough and menacing, that prizes having a giant dick, <laughs> being an Asian guy. Which, which, uh, maybe which not group gonna, are you talking about there? No, I'm just saying, like, if you're in a society that prizes those things. Yeah. Being an Asian guy, maybe not the best. But if you are in Palo Alto yeah. and you're in a society where you're respected for like, you know, being smart when it comes to technology and having a lot of money and being able to make things happen in terms of business, then I assume being an Asian guy is totally fine. Yeah, Asian guys out earn I mean it's it's statistics. Asian people out earn white people in like every category. Really? Which yeah, which is it's strange when we talk about equity and diversity. Because white people now, I believe, are number three when it comes to earnings after Asians and Indians. Really? And, I mean, God knows we treated the Asians not as bad as we treated black people, but it was close. Mm. It was fucking close. Yeah. I mean, the way we made them like, hey, so here's the idea. See these mountains? Yeah. We need a railroad to go through the middle of those mountains. Right. This is a basket, and this is a <laughs> stick of dynamite. I'm going to lower you down with some twine in the basket, and you're going to blow up. Do you know how that? You know how this worked? Wait, but they died this, as well? This is how it worked. They would, to blow a hole in the side of a mountain to make way for the Union Pacific Railroad, we would lower Chinamen down the face of a cliff in a little basket. They would stick a stick of dynamite in a little slit in the rock, light it, and then push themselves backward off the cliff face to get distance from the rock while the TNT blew. I am not exaggerating. That's what we expected them to do. But were they, like, hanging? So the only amount of time they got to be away from the dynamite was like, good. Yes. Ugh. And then they, like, had to, like, kind of swing back? Yes. Wow, that sounds rough. Yes. Like, almost all of them lost an arm. What? There was that... What else did we do to the Chinese that was awful? I mean, a ton. The internment camps. Yeah, I agreed with that. Oh, <laughs> really? No. Well, <laughs> the thing is, I actually, like, there were, I guess the reason that Pearl Harbor got attacked as efficiently as it did is there really was an American Japanese spy living in Hawaii who sold that information to the Japanese. Really? So I don't, like, hate the idea. Like, I know it looks terrible now from our, like, multicultural lens, what we mm. did. But, I, I mean, at some point, you got to be like, do we care more about offending a group of people or about protecting our nation in a time of war against horrendous foes? I mean, the Japanese, that any group of people is capable of terrible, terrible things in the right pocket of time and space. Mm. In the 1930s and 40s, the Japanese were about as bad as any group of people could ever be. Right. I mean, to other Asian people included. So it wasn't like a strictly racist thing. So They were so bad that we had to drop atomic bombs on them. Yeah. 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 I mean, dude, they would gamble on the sex of a baby inside a pregnant woman's belly, like a Chinese pregnant woman, and then they would cut her stomach open while she was still alive to see so what sex the baby was. So they didn't have to wait to find out? Yeah, they're not, they're, not, they, they're busy, dude. They got to invade the Philippines <laughs> or something. The fuck, are you serious? Yeah. They would cut the baby out just to settle the bet? Yes. And they probably did a lot worse stuff than that, too, dude. What the fuck? I just watched the uh, World War II documentary on Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's like a four, five, six part series, I forget. I the newest it. one? Yeah. I it, need to watch it. I, I've watched all the old ones. With all the colorized footage that it's absolutely unbelievable that they have access to all this footage. But then you know what we watched the other day was uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. You see this? I about, haven't. About the uh, 
Asgo, how do you say it? Fucking the Asage, Osage, the Indians. All and right, man, they were doing back some, to gay porn, some Donnie. Thank super you fucked up shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, Keep Donnie. beating your meat, Donnie. <laughs> uh, no, the Osage Indians. You know about this though? No, tell me. I don't know anything about that film. So basically, like the Osage Indians found a shitload of oil under the ground on the land that they had been given. So then this huge cottage industry of basically like white devilish businessmen crop up in that area. And they're trying to basically. What area was it? It was in fucking, what was it? Uh, in Oklahoma. God okay. damn. See, I watch a movie and I forget every pertinent detail. Like yeah. two days later, for some reason, Donnie knows it without having to have any reason to remember it. But anyway, so we fucking, uh, they're, they're trying to basically separate the Native Americans from their money by any means possible. Sure. So you have things like outside of the area where the, the Native Americans are collecting their, their checks for the money that they are owed. There'll be guys like trying to take photos of them with their their family, and they're charging them like forty dollars for a photo and shit. Just basically like doing anything to basically um, appeal to the worst impulses of impoverished people that have just been blessed with a large amount of money. But then also on top of that, there's this whole network of of doctors and businessmen and stuff like that who the their basic basic racket is that they will get a Native American woman who has a huge amount of money because of where she, the, the land that she was basically given or whatever, and they'll have one of their guys fall in love with her and then basically start working slowly to kill all of the members of their family as well as the actual woman that they've fallen in love with so that they are then able to basically inherit all these millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's it's like, a white guy who does that? Yeah, and, and Leonardo DiCaprio is kind of like the main dude, and they're basically like... Uh, he he's like the most evil motherfucker ever, and you're watching the whole movie, and it's it's like a really fascinating peek into the mind of a truly evil person because it's like very few times throughout the movie do you really see them kind of like reckoning with how horrible what they're doing, what they're doing is. They're just sort of doing it because it's just like what the boss man is telling them to do, and they're just doing it. And he's like injecting his his wife with poison and fucking. There's doctors working with them to give them poison, and it only kind of they, they only get busted because the feds get notified about mm -hmm. how many people are dying in this area, mm -hmm. and it is a fucking wild movie. I gotta I gotta recommend it. It's like mm. three and a half hours, and they say it might be Martin Scorsese's last film, or at the very least, it might be the last film that he makes that has this sort of like four hundred million dollar budget that mm -hmm. is like almost impossible to make back unless it's a fucking superhero movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. It's funny. We we expelled the natives to Oklahoma. I'm assuming this is a true story. I'd never heard of this. No, yeah. But uh, then we're like, oh, shit, there's oil there? Fuck, we sent them to the wrong state. Let's go fuck them over in Oklahoma and just find a way to do that extra legally. Yeah, movies is uh, is the the days of Django Unchained making $400 million. Is that over? Like the Tom Cruise in, in uh, whatever, Top Gun, and then Barbie was like the last gasp of that. I mean, you feel... Like you wonder that about our society in general. Like I know that the uh, the Oppenheimer thing did real good, but in terms of just leaving the house, it feels like leaving the house is dramatically less popular than it used to be. And I even point outside to Melrose when I say this. When I go back and watch the vlogs from 2017, and I realize that like my business specifically maybe had a little bit of a different energy in 2017, and there were people just really going out of their way to try to pull up. But when I watch those old vlogs and I see that how many people there were just walking around. It seems like a, a really stark difference between these days where it mm -hmm. just feels like going to Melrose and walking around. Granted, it's Tuesday at like 1 p.m. right now, so it's pretty much not a time where anybody would be doing that anyway. It just feels like it's just not as much of a thing. And I feel like people who go to nightclubs and stuff will tell you the same thing is that the nightclub scene in L.A. has really? Like not really recovered post-pandemic in the same way. I wonder if the comedy scene uh, is affected by this. To any degree, I guess like comedy's probably pretty resilient because anyone who's a real fan of it, you, you got to leave the house, right? Yeah, I, I wasn't doing comedy before the pandemic, really. And I wasn't doing stand up, so I'm not too sure. Does the scene seem healthy? Yeah, but it the does. glory days was back 
the the comedy store with Joe Rogan and all these fucking guys being yeah. in there all the time. It feels like a lot of that energy kind of left at a certain point, right? Well, I would say they say the the romanticized period of stand up comedy is the eighties. I guess that was the total boom. Then the nineties, there was a very famous dive in the industry, mm. and the idea behind that was because in the eighties there were so many hucksters setting up clubs and putting shitty comics up that audiences started going out and seeing bad comedy, mm. and then they would never see a show again because they thought that's what it was in the 2000s that's my favorite era of comedy is the early 2000s just because of like what was permissible to say back then mm. you go watch a special from the early 2000s and it's so shocking in a hilarious way but i honestly think comedy i mean it, the netflix and hulu and amazon prime during the pandemic a lot of their their biggest product was stand-up comedy mm. so i feel like stand-up has done pretty well because watching stand-up comedy is so fashionable these days that obviously there's going to be people going out and and seeing stand-up live because mm. they see it on their screen. Whereas, like, when we were inside for the pandemic and we learned to shop online, I feel like just because you bought a blouse on Amazon, that doesn't make you want to run out and buy a blouse in a store mm. like seeing a comic you like on screen makes you want to go see a comic live. Right, and, like, I mean, the whole trend of everything in our society is kind of that you just don't really need to leave your house. And I, I'm reading this book that my publicist gave me uh, for Christmas that's basically about the history of the porn business. There we go. Back to the porn. You guys uh, probably saw this coming. Yes. But anyway, it's it's just talking about, you know, all throughout the 60s and 70s and, like, sort of how this whole world came together because everybody was getting hit with, like, obscenity lawsuits or, or being charged with obscenity back in the sort 60s Sort of like in 70s. comedies. Right. And, but then, so... Like, a very common thing in L.A. was, like, there were bars that pretty much appealed largely to the porn community. And I'm just reading about this in the book in the 70s, where all the famous porn stars and all the, the, the people that wanted to be around them and stuff, they would just kind of go to the same bars every night. And that, to me, is so impossible to imagine because people just stay home. Every porn girl I know, what does she do on a Tuesday night? She stays in the fucking house. She's not going anywhere. It's mm -hmm. like she might leave the house on a Friday or mm -hmm. a Saturday to go to a party or go on a date, some shit like that. But like that impulse to leave the crib is very small in comparison to like, you know, nowadays you can watch TV. There's a million different things you can watch on TV, a million different things to do on your phone. Say you get into gaming, there's a million different games that you could literally be entertained by playing for the rest of your life. But then in comparison to that, motherfucking fly you finally decided to sit in my coffee right near the end of the podcast you piece of shit uh <laughs> in comparison to that that just filled me with rage just seeing that fly trying to pull that move off but like in comparison to that like in the 70s if you were just staying home if you're a single person on a tuesday night you're staying in there might be a couple of good shows on tv but realistically not that much mm -hmm. watching tv kind of dismal experience you pretty you got to leave the house you're going to call a bunch of your buddies, just call them, just talk to them on the phone mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah. I mean, like, you're probably going to go meet up somewhere and hang out. Now you can sit there and watch, like, a million different live streamers hang out. You can watch Jack Doherty have more fun than you could ever have. Shout out to Jack Doherty. Oh, Him and I have collabed Doherty. in the past. I think in L.A., ironically, we might be less likely, though we live in this, this megatropolis with, like, four million people in the city limits— we might ironically be more incentivized to stay in because going out in L.A. is such a bitch. Mm. The idea of finding a parking space at a Best Buy right now fills me with a nameless dread. At a Best Buy? Yeah, just because if I go to a Best Buy in Westwood, the Best Buy in Westwood, probably I'm going to have to be hovering around in a parking lot that's way too small for anything bigger than a Fiat. Really? And while well, I'm going to be dodging homeless people and there's going to be a meter where after five seconds, five minutes rather, I have to, I'm going to get a ticket. So you live right in the middle of the shit. I don't even know where there's a Best Buy near where I live. Like the Best Buys, we're lucky to still have a couple Best Buys in this godforsaken city. Yeah, I talked to some people in Sacramento, uh, some guys who worked at a Best Buy who were fans of my channel. They said Black Friday is like dead now. Nobody even goes out and shops for electronics. I believe it. But I, if you go to the mall on Black Friday or even like Christmas time or whatever, sometimes you'll be deceived. Go to the Topanga Mall around Christmas time. You'll be like, mall culture is alive and well. I want to smack this motherfucker so bad, but I know. Uh, see, if I even begin to try to do it, I got to get my salt gun. 
Yeah. These flies must die. The anti-aircraft gun. But th- there are certain times of year, because I go to the mall a decent amount on the weekend with my, with my kid. We'll yeah. just kind of go hang out for like an hour or two. And the mall still has something going on, but it's it's not that impressive besides the few times of years where it's really cracking. Like me even having the store is kind of like a bet or an investment that going out in real life will slowly start to become more appealing to mm-hmm. people. But it does feel like that bet kind of flies in, in the face of all of recorded history where it seems like going out in person just slowly becomes less and less important to people. Yeah. You're saying that technology only goes one way and now it's pretty clear the technology has made staying home more tenable and that probably there isn't going to be an upswing or a reversal where people start going and doing in-person yoga classes. Mm. I, for me personally, I could never be fully secluded like i for instance when i have a choice at the supermarket self-checkout or manned aisle i always take the manned aisle let's interact yes talk yes well it's also that and i'm very lazy and i don't want to bag my own groceries and ring up my own shit it is kind of confusing which which is bullshit i when i have a big cart full of shit the last thing i want to do is punch in a bunch of numbers and scan a bunch of codes but i yeah i never mind that interaction i have ptsd of like scanning the loaf of bread and then putting it in the checkout area and then it telling me that this loaf of bread does not weigh enough to qualify as a loaf of bread. Uh, yeah, who wants to deal with that? That bothers me. I don't appreciate that. Yeah, who wants to have the guy, when you're buying a bottle of wine, come over and check your ID and pull your wallet out? Yeah. Don't like it. I We actually, my squad and I, we started going back to in-person meetings at my apartment. Hmm. We're trying to do something like office hours to bring us back together. Right. Because, yeah, dude, I'm over... If I have a day where I don't have to be anywhere, which is rare, usually I have a podcast, I'm going to jujitsu, I'm doing some stand up. But when I have a day where I just have nowhere to be, it just it feels like you're in a, uh, it feels like you're in solitary confinement with no clock. Mm. And I, I I I need that punctuation of human interaction. I'm pretty optimistic that you made a good investment with this store and that things will go back to people wanting to interact. It's just so intertwined with our species. Mm. We we need that. No, and I encourage people because, listen, we live in a world where you can literally wake up, sit up in bed, prop a, a small pillow under the, your, your lower back, and then flip open your laptop and just start working on your laptop, answering emails, blog posts, rec- working on YouTube, watching videos, whatever it is, all the stuff that you plan on doing for this day. You can do that. And I honestly did that throughout my early 20s, like a significant amount of time. I think that's like the worst thing you can do. If you really want to be someone who's going to get shit done in this world, you need a, a program. You know, you need to wake up, get in the shower, eat your breakfast. Go to a fucking coffee shop. It took me a while to realize this, but when I was trying to be like a writer, which was basically what I was trying to do for a couple of years before the YouTube thing kind of took off, you know, I used to like go to the Starbucks and just post up with my laptop and just write on my laptop for three fucking hours straight. A perfect bar spin must be treated like making the perfect cake. This was the time period where I decided to stop doing content about BMX and try to like write and become hmm. somebody who could write about things outside of bike riding, which hmm. didn't really work. I hmm. had to kind of turn to podcasting. Well, now your your pencil is your mouth and your your paper is a podcast microphone. So and my asshole is the paper <laughs> and Holly Day's tongue is the pencil as well. Fucking asshole, dude. <laughs> you piece of shit. No, uh, I, I'm with you. I still love working out in public. I'll still go to UCLA and use their libraries there. Really? Yeah, it's it's dude. Well, because their their campus is in the middle of like the most valuable real estate in Bel Air, mm. overlooking like all these 1920s mansions and shit and beautiful landscaping. It's when I was staying in Hawaii, I, we stayed at this like resort. It's like a big ass hotel with like a, a shitload of places to stay. And it's right on the beach. It's super nice. It's called Turtle Bay. And I, at one point, I'm, like, looking around the lobby, and I'm just seeing a lot of young people, like, people in their 20s and shit, and they're just, like, sitting at various tables in the cafe area. And I just say to, Laura, to Lena, I'm like, why, like, like wh- 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 you're telling me that these girls who look like they're, like, 21, you, they're telling me that they're staying at this fucking expensive-ass hotel? Like, where do you think these girls are coming from? She's like, oh, there's no way that they're staying here. They're just, like, girls from town who just come here to just work on their laptops because it's, like, a decent place to mm-hmm. post up. And I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, I remember that. I remember when I used to fucking go out of my way to leave the house to just sit there on my laptop. Now that just doesn't feel really, like, tenable because I feel like I would be a little bit too on edge that somebody was going to try to kill me slash 
ask me for a photo. Sure. Both of which I'm equally afraid of. Well, uh, let's go through this. Just I kidding. just, just I, kidding, guys. I posted up. Uh, I don't have the maybe. I mean, some people really don't like me, but there's no real threat of assassination. But I was just at the Melrose Starbucks across the street, which has traumatized you. You've mentioned it multiple times, and I I haven't been over there since we got back here. I when you get in there, and I would say it's probably. 50-50 housed and unhoused people <laughs> right. at the seats mm -hmm. and at the tables. And you go in there, you buy your coffee, and you're like, I'm a customer now. I can use the bathroom. Great. That problem's taken care of. You walk around the corner. There is a very foreboding padlock with a bunch of digits on it. Mm. You round the corner. You ask, hi, so while somebody's handling, like, scalding hot steam, you have to ask them for the bathroom code, and there's a line wrapped around the fucking counter. They yell at you, like, a six-digit number, <laughs> and you walk over there, like, trying to remember, like, all right, was it the Fibonacci sequence? What was that that she just yelled at me? Okay, I think I can remember it. I was born in that month. You're, like, trying to work out in your head how you can remember all these digits. But then you see there's, like, already somebody in there, and then there's a homeless guy in the line in front of you waiting for the bathroom to open up. Mm -hmm. He goes in there, locks the door, and he doesn't come out for 15 minutes. Hmm. Was he taking a shit? Was he shooting a heroin? In, was he shooting heroin into his arm? I don't know. Hmm. But either way, I just have to take a pee pee that would last like three seconds, and I can't because I'm in an inner city Starbucks. But the reality is, is that now you can just go outside and just piss on the street, and like the I'm on probation, so oh, I can't. Yeah. Well, the cops just have so much going on. That, like my fear of taking a piss on the street in downtown Nashville pretty serious because oh, yeah. this is like a city that it seems like people take the law quite serious yes even midtown manhattan a lot of security a lot of cops i would be a little bit weirded out mm -hmm. by it hollywood i mean every man is on their own out here they got to fight for their ability to urinate and you know you ever go to like a jack-in-the-box and they have that that lock on the door in the bathroom and, the, and you say what's the code and they say one two three four and you're like oh okay uh -huh. it's kind of a joke you guys made it as easy as possible yeah yeah you go to the Starbucks over here. Yeah. One six seven. And it's like a there's a, a Roman numeral yes. and like an exponent and shit. It's like impossible <laughs> to figure out how to get in there. Yeah, I've been there before, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm taking my bet that retail still has good days to come. I feel like you know people are just slowly, steadily, and I don't know if I'm just being a little too optimistic, but I feel like people are slowly, steadily getting a little bit sick of having to stay in the crib all the time and they still crave outdoor experiences the problem is is that you can get people to come out here if you're dropping a new shoe if you have an exclusive merch drop for special occasions people will kind of come out it's a little bit more complicated to get them to come out on a, a tuesday at noon that doesn't really seem appealing to mm -hmm. anybody i'm sure it's better for you with this massive online platform what are you paying rent here hey! sorry covid uh i think six thousand ish Dollars, sixty five hundred, something like that. That's not that bad. Not that bad, right? I thought on Melrose it would have been minimum ten K, probably closer to twenty. When we moved here in twenty seventeen, we were paying five grand a month, which seemed like a lot compared to our downtown location where we were paying, I think, like twelve hundred dollars a month when uh. we first got in there because it was the biggest piece of shit storefront ever. Uh -huh. I think we were paying five grand for the, the spot two stores over. And then when when the pandemic hit or like actually right before the pandemic hit, when we decided that we wanted to leave, they were actually trying to get us to stay to the extent where they were offering it to us for I think four thousand a month. So that was, you know, if you if you go five uh, six years in between, you're expecting the the rent to go up, and then they, it was the other way around. But man, I was just you, you see that the barracks went away. They got rid of the, the barracks? skate park, Steve Barra and Eric Austin skate park. No, they said that their rent. When they got that spot in, I think, 2012, 2013, something like that area, their rent on that spot was $18,000, which it is a huge fucking skate park, yeah. to, be for, to be fair. Indoor. Where is it? Gigantic warehouse. I forget. I've been there back in the day. I saw, I saw a uh, Gucci Mane concert there back in the day. Ooh. Is but, it downtown LA area, roughly? I feel like it's like closer to the airport. I forget. I forget exactly okay. where it is. But uh, it, it 18000 and then they just recently had to end their lease. The landlord was trying to get $105,000 a month Damn. for rent. So your rent's only going to buy about 1000 bucks. 
Is that correct? Or roughly? Yeah. Over the course of seven years. Yeah. That's insane. I mean, with inflation alone, even if your rent was like constant, you would think they'd want like three or four extra grand just to make up for that discrepancy. But that's the weird thing around here is that there's a lot less foot traffic than there was in 2017. So the spots are a little bit less valuable. So the rent is not going to necessarily go up as much as you would expect. But then at the same time, so there's less foot traffic. So the, the spot is worth less. But then at the same time, every single spot on the street is full. So it's like if you wanted to get a spot on Melrose, you're going to have a hell of a time because every fucking spot is full. That's why we ended up taking this spot. We always saw ourselves making our comeback to Melrose and getting like a big spot. Not happening. Like fucking we ended up getting a spot that was smaller than the one that we had before, which I think is fine because like ultimately we have enough space that everything will be fine. But it's just like every spot is fucking taken on this block which now actually there's an opening you remember t rel his he had a store with his wife down the street that one is now open kind of sucks because that was one that we really wanted hmm. and I, I knew that as soon as we got a spot that some shit would open up and we'd be able to get it but the thing is is that that spot's big i'm guessing that spot's twenty thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. it's a big ass spot it's got to be at least 15 mm -hmm. so i mean that, that's a shitload so i'm kind of glad that we're paying less over here uh, i'll see if i can stretch it into my budget sell some danny mullen merch over there let's do a danny mullen regime pop-up mm. let's do it have everybody come by i couldn't tell if you were trying to end the podcast right there or not no i, mean, I try to we can end I, it soon but i heard you one time on a podcast slam some chick you were podcasting with i think you might have talked about it on sledge lords because you were trying to wrap up and she dove into a new subject without reading you at all and it just enraged you and you fired her it's funny because i know the exact podcast that you're referring to and it was back in the very early days of me podcasting it was in like 2015 yeah and so it's probably not something that anybody would remember but yeah that that's something in general that you kind of run into i've had brick baby do that to me a little bit when we're doing podcasts together where it's like i'm blatantly trying to wrap it up and then the, the co-host is just kind of like so what was it like getting into music? Yes. <laughs> You're just kind of like, okay, this is a, a chronological podcast uh -huh. to a certain extent. Uh -huh. like the, the end part is not going to be where we go back to the yes. very beginning of their career. Yes. So what was it like when you were in high school and you started getting into hip-hop yeah. music? So losing your virginity. Let's talk about that after you just interviewed a porn star for like an hour and a half. Yeah. So hitting your puberty. Did you have any attraction? To How I big was your dick when you were 18? I wonder how big my dick is sometimes before I hit puberty. I wonder, like, if I could go back to eighth grade, it'd be pretty interesting to, like, you know, poke around. Yeah, because I, I wish I had written more about my dick throughout my childhood because I remember being a little boy and seeing my dad's dick and thinking that it was the biggest fucking thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. Oh, yes. And then seeing it as an adult accidentally and being like, oh, that's pr pretty regular dick. Definitely not what I remember seeing as a kid, but you're... Your sense of scale is so different. Uh, the question that's demanded here is, uh, well, when did you see your dad's dick as an adult? Yeah, I can't remember. It might have been like changing for the swimming pool maybe a decade or two ago. Okay, interesting. Fortunately, I have not seen my father's penis since I was a wee lad. But I had the same experience. We should work on that. I had the same experience that you're talking about, though, seeing my dad's cock and it being huge. But I clearly I don't have a huge cock. It's smaller than yours. And... <laughs> The only evidence I have now that I've been able to piece together about how big or not big my dad's dick is, is we my mom and I were watching comedy, and my mom sometimes will try to say something, like, really dirty or, like, sexual, I think is a means of bonding with me. Mm. Because our conversations are always very, like, professional. They're about football, about life, or about where we're going for a family vacation. So occasionally she'll see my videos and they're all filthy and she'll want to relate to me on that level. And there was a comment made in a stand-up special about big penises. And it was already starting to get a little uncomfortable in the room, the subject of cocks and just me and my mom. And my mom goes, my dad, your grandpa, I guess he had a really big one. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. And the subtext there is that my dad obviously doesn't have a really big one mm. or she would have said you know your father has a really big one mm. because she wouldn't have had to go up the family tree to my grandpa that's so, such like a naughty joke coming from a mom i mean that's kind of a naughty joke coming from anybody if donnie were to talk about somebody who works here and be like yeah, i heard steven got a big one that, i'd be like what the fuck bro that's such a strange thing for you to know or tell me about but, but you'd like, appreciate it at the same time 
I mean, I'm a person who thinks that dick-related information should just be shared more freely amongst people. Oh, yeah. me too, dude. But no, I, I'm, that's, that's fascinating. Because, okay, that book I'm reading about the, the olden days of the porn industry. Yeah. One part, they're talking about this guy who was a big porn star back in the day, and they say he had a 13-inch dick. <sighs> and I'm, I mean, that's bigger than, than Dread. Yes. And I realized in that moment that in my mind, penises have been getting bigger yeah. over time throughout history. But there really is no reason to think that. Like, if a guy could come out with a dread-sized cock in 2024, why could that guy have not had that same dick 40 years ago, 100 years ago? There's no reason to think dicks are getting bigger. Yeah, I dispute that. Let me ask you this. It's on the subject of big dicks. A girl that I was sexting with recently, Uh super, super respectable chick, went to a really good college, a professional type, which it's, it's rare. You know, around L.A., most of the chicks I meet don't have a career going. They're usually prostitutes, essentially. essentially yeah. She, so like, there's like, you know, in the back of my mind, there's like, you know, something good, serious could develop with this chick. Well, we're sexting one day, Adam, around Christmas too, which makes it all the more disturbing. And she sends me a picture that a guy took of her sucking this guy's dick. Downward perspective. And he has the most fucked up cock I've ever seen. It's it's probably knocking on the door of 10 or 11 inches, but it's relatively thin. Now, when you're 10 and 11 inches, you, you got to have a little bit of girth. It can't be a churro at that point. So still, if this cock were six inches, it would probably be a girth monster. But relatively, the dimensions are all fucked up. But that aside, there is a 10-inch penis laid across this girl's fucking face, and she sends that to me as if I will be turned on and think it's hot. And so prior to this, you were thinking of her as maybe a potential future girlfriend? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I w- don't do that to a guy that you're thinking about getting serious with. Jesus Christ. I will argue don't do that to a guy who you just want to hook up with once. Yeah. It really, nothing, because even if you know the chick fucks other guys and is out there getting busy, you want to suspend disbelief. It's like watching a movie. We know DiCaprio is an actor who lives up in the Hollywood Hills who is a complete degenerate who bangs 10 girls a night while wearing headphones and blindfolded. Mm. We know that, but when you watch Killers of the Flower Moon, you want to think he's an Oklahoma schemester trying to exploit an Indian. And he is like 50 playing a 25-year-old, which is pretty impressive. That too. You know, he's aged well. You got to give it to them. Children's blood will go a long way. Yeah, he's fucking all these 19-year-old girls every night. Uh-huh. It's hard to get old when you're living that lifestyle, right? This is all conjecture in case one of his legal representatives is listening. I don't think that's up for debate that he's fucking young women, right? That's kind of his whole deal. You're right. That's true. But like the thing where he wears a blindfold and headphones, I've heard that from enough like one source removed sources now. Wait, seriously? Headphones and a blindfold? That's what I'm hearing. I mean, what's the point of fucking a bunch of hot chicks and then wearing a blindfold? You get bored when you fuck that many young hot chicks. So you're going to make it more boring by just staring into just nothingness? I'm not the guy who does it. I just question if he's the guy who does it as well. Maybe it's like a deprivation tank. How would you feel if your daughter ended up hanging out with Leo? There are worse <laughs> choices, I suppose. I mean, it could it could know. be a lot worse. I kind of feel like I would rather her like be dating like the worst random guy her age than dating a guy who blatantly has like a fetish for younger girls and is like basically soulless and emotionless at this point because he's fucked so many of them already yeah and the problem is too you got to think that being in a relationship with DiCaprio and then getting kicked to the curb when they turn 24 in 363 days and that, that's that's best case scenario yeah. if, you, if you make it more than a couple nights with this guy that's, that's <laughs> fucking you, you've, you've officially gotten a commitment out of him how do you feel about this statement Boosie said about his daughter he said this to her to her boyfriend he said you could cheat on her just don't beat on her. Those were his words of caution to him, which I totally understand where he's coming from. You cheat on her, break her heart, whatever. That's, that's fair play. That's that's what happens in relationships. You're young, you're going to cheat on a girl. A lot of guys cheat is what it is. If you beat her, then I got to get involved because hmm. she, she can't, she can't, you know, avenge this in the way that you would probably want, right? Now, I'm even in the point I'm at in my life, it might be a situation where I say, hey, Donnie, you got to go track down this 15-year-old boy and beat the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. Turn off the gay porn. <laughs> Get out there. <laughs> you can use my car. Go find this guy beat his ass. I don't know. It's, it's just, And I don't want to be put in that position either. Damn, dude. 
Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know his background, but it just makes... He's been charged with attempted murder. Okay. And, and ordering hits on people specifically. Yeah, I mean, it just makes me think that his childhood was, was rough enough to the point where... Like, That's the binary in a relationship. There's only two real options. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it's all flowers and rainbows and wedding bells if there's just cheating and no beating. Yeah, yeah it makes me wonder, like, Tyreek Hill is uh, the wide receiver for the Dolphins, like, huge star. He is convicted for beating the shit out of one of his girlfriends. Really? And I guess he's, like, knocked up two chicks since he's been engaged to the chick that he's now married to. But really, like, the beating, it just seems like uh, beating is so accepted in some rungs of society that, uh, and, and it's really crazy. Like, I mean, it's, it's, um... Uh, you get beat up in prison though for doing it, but it's so commonplace. Like in the <laughs> NFL, really? for instance. I mean, I feel like yeah. You, talk to Rat Dick Ralph about that. I feel like you, uh, but he's gonna get beat up either way, right? That's true. He's just yeah. kind of a punching bag. Uh, but I feel like I hear a lot about how like child molesters are gonna get beat up in jail, and I think if you were some sort of like serious rapist, for sure too. I don't know that like the guy who you know was beaten on his girl and like happened to fucking crack her skull. I don't know if that guy's necessarily going to get that much attention behind bars. Now, certainly it's not like a respectable crime mm -hmm. in the same way that like if you were a gang member and you are in prison because you were shooting at some guy that you don't get along with, people are going to look at that and think, oh, he's a real one, mm -hmm. whatever. I don't know. Like, I, th I think a lot of that shit is overstated about like the moral code that is imposed on you when you're in prison. Yeah. Uh, all I know is for my stay in prison, the guys really hated child molesters. That came up even though I was only in there for like 18 hours. Mm. And then I know about Rat Dick's experience. But what bothers me the most about like beating on chicks, which I would never even dream of doing because like, I mean, I think you and I probably came from households where that was like out of the question. If I felt the need to hit the girl... I got to get out of there. Yes. In the short term, I need to just leave the house. Yeah. In the long term, unless we can kind of fix whatever that was, I think this is probably the time for us to end this. Yeah. Yeah. The sad thing, though, is like, is it kind of seems like, like, I haven't really heard too many stories about a guy beats the shit out of his girlfriend and she immediately calls the police and leaves him. Mm. It seems like, to the contrary, like, beating a chick seems like a decent way to keep her around. <laughs> Maybe in the short term. But it doesn't it seem like that, though? It seems like the chicks who get beat up, like Ray Rice is married to the chick he KO'd in an elevator. Mm. But you got to imagine that those girls... Von Miller's chick recanted and, like, refused mm. to testify against him after... I mean, he was just fucking playing in a playoff game. Like he, was like, just, he was just pass rushing, dude. He was rushing the QB. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. is I've known a lot of couples over the years where it seemed like the abusing each other thing was, like, a pretty... You know, it was kind of like mutual combat. They had sort of agreed upon, like, yeah. oh, this is just something that we're going to do. We're going to beat the fuck out of each other from time to time. And, you know, I, my relationship certainly is not like that. I've definitely, like, severed friendships. They're not, like, real friendships. But there was, like, a dude that used to be around me a decent amount. And then I had a birthday party one year. And everybody's doing coke and getting super fucked up. And I was off in sex land having some sort of crazy threesome scenario Probably going on or whatever. By holiday. And it was a big house, so I didn't realize on the other side of the house, this guy's beating the shit out of his girlfriend. Ooh. And then I end up hearing about it. It definitely turned me off to really like being around this guy too much after that. I definitely, yeah. I wasn't really like keen on inviting him to parties after that. That just seemed like, okay. You're somebody who clearly can't handle their cocaine. Yeah. Or, I mean, if you're going to beat the shit out of your girlfriend, at least do it in the guest house, okay? Mm. Not in the other wing. Get your own hotel room. Sure. Anyway, all right. I got to interview uh, a, a gang member, I guess you could say, after this. Oh, you're saying I'm not gangsta? I'm just saying that, you know, I don't want him to come up in here and beat the dog shit out of you yeah, and no, no, no. force you to apply a rear naked choke. That's. I don't want to do that either. I'm not stretched out for the morning. Oh, well, yeah. He'll get you stretched out. <laughs> sure. I'm going to get raped, too. Danny Mullen, we should do this more often. Yeah, man. We got to uh, we gotta keep uh, sledge lords in the roto. You know? mm. Maybe not weekly, but quarterly. Let's monthly. Something let's, like that. Let's jump on, do some pods. Yeah. Get in let's get it in baby i like it let's get it in just like holiday got her tongue into your filthy you read my mind i was about to say that too asshole <sighs> all right appreciate you danny mullen no jumper sludge lords mm. we out out